Beloved, welcome back to the shop. I was not going to make a video today, and then I thought about it, and I changed my mind. The reason why I wasn't going to make a video today is because I thought it was something that you wouldn't have any interest in. It's pouring down rain, it's the winter is coming, there's all those things that have been building up, all those little unfinished projects that you don't get to. And I thought, well, I'll take a couple days off, I'll just knock them all out, and then we can get back to our original programming. But if you're like me, I really enjoy to see behind the scenes. I like to see what my favorite creators are doing and we learn and, and kind of help one another out, you know, get, get inspired to do things. And last week we did the emergency truck kit and I've got all the stuff laid out right here still from the video and I was gonna start packing everything into the truck, you know, and there's a lot of stuff so it's gotta be just done just right. I thought maybe you might be interested in it. So let's do it together. We've got, uh, there's just so much to do. We've got to service the cats. Uh, we've got to uh, get the snow bikes all sorted out. We got the emergency kits for the truck. We've got the chainsaws. You know, they got a heavy use uh, cutting firewood and putting those things back into service. All that stuff is, will take place this week. So I'm going to invite you into my shop and uh, just bring you along uh, like a fly on the wall or you can look over my shoulder and we'll get done what we get done. Oh goodness, Mama, you have the life of Riley. Sometimes I envy you. Sit around, I wonder who works for who. Must be nice to be a cat. Must be nice to be a cat. I guess it depends on the cat. Does this wood stove heat the whole shop up? And it does. My shop is 40 by 40 with 16 foot eaves and it's insulated. This is the Hearthstone Green Mountain 80, I believe. I think it was rated for 5,000 square feet. It was the biggest one they had at the time. And absolutely, yeah, it, it's a little bit cooler on the other side, but around here where I work, it's more than enough. Usually about lunchtime, I damp it down, put it on low, and it just goes into a slow burn. What are you up to, huh? Oh, you're warm. All right, lay down, lay down, lay down. <laughs> My trad con brought me lunch. You just missed her. Turkey pesto. You want some grubbing potato chips? Hawaiian kettle style potato chips. Sweet Maui onion. Try them. They're absolutely my favorite. For the retrieval kit, we're going to use the big Vertex bag. This is a very good bag for retrieval because it sits flat. It's not so deep where you have to take stuff out to find stuff and the material it's made out of is relatively water resistant. I've taken this out and thrown it into the wet slush and it always say it stays dry inside. If you're going to be building your retrieval kit, beloved, this is where you start. You start with your good, uh, your dynamic rope, like a bubble rope or a yankum. This is worth its weight in gold. Combine this with a couple of the so soft shackles and, and you really have something. Space blanket, we'll throw that in first. It doesn't take up much space. It's nice to have that to throw down when it's wet and mushy. Put our bubble rope in there. With these three things right here, you can really get a lot done. After that, we're going to go to uh, our pulleys and such. Put our tree strap in there. Now, this stuff is going to go not in the cab, but it'll be in the back of the bed. Make sure you have one of these. Don't pull on your trailer ball. Very, very dangerous. Get one of these in combination with a, a shackle, and that's how you properly pull. I always have an extra pin, too. It's a small thing, no harm there. I think the shovel, a foldable shovel, is part of your, your retrieval gear because you'll have to dig out a lot. And then if you have a synthetic line, you can use one of these donuts or wire rope. I, I use these on synthetic. I don't know if you're supposed to or not, but I've not found it to be a problem. I like to have both a dedicated or a bespoke pair of leather gloves. And don't forget your winch controller. And to top it all off, I'm gonna put a rain jacket in there. Every time I have to, to do this, I crawl under and uh, you know you get all wet and muddy. So that right there is a nice kit that's gonna have everything you need, nothing you don't need. And let's store, we're gonna store this in the pickup bed. There's a lot of steel in here, so I keep this in the back. Don't want that flopping around the cab. Keeps everything dry and secure. I think I have a, I don't know if I've ever used that. This is Mrs. W's idea. I thought that this was for old men, <laughs> but after having it, I have to say it's really, really nice, especially if you have to drive to Portland. It's, you know, it's not Fort Knox or anything, but it definitely keeps things dry and, and out of uh, 
you know, people's not, you can't just reach in and grab it. it it's been a, a good one. The retrieval stuff, it might not be applicable to you if you don't live in a place where there's snow and do that sort of thing. But this stuff here will be, this is going to be everything that a guy would need to deal with, with tires and, and flat tires and, and airing things up. Now, I've got onboard air on my truck. Not everyone's going to have that. If you don't have that, gentlemen, this is what you're going to ask for your, for your wife to get you for Christmas. This is the M Milwaukee M12, the little compressor. We have ran the guts out of this thing, and it is an essential. It is a very, very good tool. Uh, affordable if you get it on sale, but it'll, uh, it'll inflate pretty much everything. Not the fastest, but this is something, maybe you don't carry it in your truck all the time, but if you're going to go on a trip or camping for the weekend, man, for goodness sake, put it in your truck. You, you will thank me. So for the tire kit, this little Vertex bag here works really good because it works it fits my blackjack tire repair kit which i'll show you i'll give you detailed inside of that this is a definitely a proho grade tire repair kit if you haven't repaired a tire you can do it this is really all all you need uh, to, to fix pretty much any tire wheel barrel truck whatever it gives you a, a big reamer look how look how heavy and sturdy that this is you know this is not you know homeowner grade this is good stuff right here this is stuff you'd have in a shop it's going to have your butyl pieces here all you do if you have a let's say you run over a nail you yank that nail out you take this reamer you ream that in the hole and then you this is like a kind of a sewing machine needle and then you thread a piece of this repair this really rubbery gooey stuff and you jam it in there you can follow the instructions i mean it's very simple I anyone can do this and, and that will seal it. It's everything that you need uh, to seal it. There's some lube right there. I'm sure the instructions are in here somewhere, but this is not an expensive kit. You can get these for usually around under less, less 65, 70 bucks or so. But man, this is the way to go. I'm also gonna have a deflator. Uh, let me show you how these work. This is an ARB deflator. This is a very uh, nice tool right here. Deflating your tires is a, a trick, a get out of jail free trick. It can get you unstuck uh, by, increasing the the footprint of the tire more surface area inside your stem here is a little valve stem called a schrader and if you push on that that's you know i think you're familiar with that you can take these loose uh, and deflate your tires i mean you can stick your fingernail in there it'll take forever but you can do this but you don't know what your pressures are and so this is a way by if you thread this on here what it does and these are made by arb australian what it does is it captures that Schrader valve. If you lose that Schrader valve, and dudes have, and it flies off in the snow, you are, you're in trouble. So it, it's, a, it's, a, sure, it's, it's a, a safe way to remove that valve stem by pressing this in, it, it keeps it in there, and then you can deflate quickly and you don't lose it. So now I can, there you go. So I'll just deflate that down take it down to 10, 12 PSI, and then I'm good. Do that on all four tires. When I have my desired pressure setting, I just, I take, it'll, it'll reinstall it. It's very, very easy to do. And then that's it. And then take it off and we have, just have a safe, reliable way to deflate your tires to get the pressure that you want uh, without uh, any, any nonsense. I'm getting pretty close to needing some new tires here. I'm running the Neato, uh, what are these, the Ridge Grapplers? Ridge Grapplers. I let a guy talk me into these. I, I don't have any, they're fine. I have no complaints. Normally, I'm a, I, I like the BFG KO2s. <laughs> I used to have this, this uh, Mexican tire guy. He has a small shop not too far from here. He's a really good dude. And I, and I would tell him, I'd call him, I'm like, I want you to order me those KO2s. He's like, oh, SA, he goes, those things are so expensive. I can get you the same tire, so much cheaper. I don't want your Mexican tire. Just order me the KO2s. All right, all right. So, but I, I went to a different guy and he talked me out of the, the BFGs and, and gave me these and they're fine, but I've just never warmed up to the look of them. I think that they're a very ugly tire. I like the look of the KO2 better. And I don't know, every time I walk by and look at it, it does not give me the fizz. So no other reason than just, I don't like the look of them. Yes, a indeed. I've got a good racist Mexican joke. What'd the Mexican say when the house fell on him? Get off me, Holmes. I'll tell you a funny story. I was doing a, a residency. I was a medic with the fire department at Denver General. I had to go into the ER and 
have so many hours to do IVs and different things, you know, working with the nurses. It was part of the school. And I roll down there, and the nurse, uh, right off the bat, uh, I get attached to a nurse, and uh, a Mexican guy comes in, and he's coming down off of heroin or something, but he's super mad. He's handcuffed fully shackled to the gurney and he's just raising hell, right? And then everyone's trying to deal with this guy and they wheel him into a room and she tells me that now this is my job to go get bilateral uh, IVs starting, you know? And so I picked the big ones, right? You know, cause he was giving me a bunch of trouble. The big ones hurt a lot more, but you know, <laughs> it's the little things in life. So I was trying to get these IVs started on this guy, right? And he's, he's raging and he's spitting and, and he's just carrying on and he, he almost spit on me. So I went around to his head and I waited for everyone to leave and I leaned down really close to his ear and I said, you spit on me, bro, and I'll put this in your eye. I had a really big like a catheter for, for IV and he's like, He's like, oh, okay, okay, man, okay, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> so he didn't give me any problems after that. But funny, what I forgot to say is when we were wheeling him, wheeling him in there, there was cops and nurses and we were trying to hold him down to deal with all this. And when we were pushing on him, he looked up, he's like, get off me, Holmes, <laughs> which was pretty funny. Okay, so for the tire kit, uh, we'll put the blackjack in the bottom. Uh, this little Vertex bag has a little Nice little spot right there. Look at that. Almost tailor-made for our deflator. And then your air hose. If you didn't have an air hose, you know, I don't, would that fit? Yeah, you, maybe. If you took the battery out, you could probably make that work. I'm not going to carry that. As I said, I've got onboard air. One thing to consider, though, if you're dealing with these truck air hoses, is make sure you get one of these guys. These are super cool. So uh, what it does is it clips onto the Schrader valve so, and it holds itself on there so you don't have to sit there and hold it because it takes a long time with some of these big tires especially if you're running like 38s 40 42s it takes forever to pump them up so you can just clip it on there and it'll uh, it'll hold on you don't have to hold it you can do, go do other things so that's a, a nice little feature to have anywhere in your shop or or your truck so i'll put my air hoses in there and then uh, this is kind of for tires i don't know maybe retrieval cat litter uh, helps for traction on ice but right there is a nice little kit that's everything a guy would need to do a repair nice and neat grab and go the tire kit i'll keep in the cab and i, I do like to use these bags because the grab and go is nice if you need to throw it in another truck you're going to go out of town you know everything's in there and you're not scrounging around for stuff so whenever you need to repair tires you know that all your stuff's in there Something I didn't mention in the last video was non-lethal options. If you are not comfortable carrying a firearm or you live in a jurisdiction where it's not legal, there are some things you can do, maybe even some of our European friends. I keep this in my door panel. I have shared this before, but I'll just show you what's in it and where it goes. Uh, but I carry four, three or four things in here. You can get a big, a big bear spray, pepper spray. This is a good deterrent. Just understand the limitations, obviously, right? I don't need a lecture. I understand it. Every time I show this, people tell me, oh, it's the wrong one. It'll work. I promise you it'll work. Good volume, uh, lots of range, and this is a good thing to have in your door panel. So bear spray and a, uh, what do they call these? You know, I don't know, the, is it an asp? You know, the, the nightstick, like the cop shoes. That's a, that's a good thing to have. You can carry that in your pocket, but to be able to have something that could, there's a lot of times you see a lot of videos where guys will, if you roll up on a car wreck, it's really hard to break glass windows and having something, you're, you're looking around reaching for something, you can beat on it, you can throw rocks at it. They're really hard to break, but these will break them. And to have just something to, to do that is helpful in addition just to keep people out of your face. And then a stun gun. Right there, right? These things are nasty and scary. That scares me every time I push it. So, uh, well, I've got those, this in a nice SOE kit, but this little guy, the little, John makes these little inserts for the tool kits. It works super nice for this non-lethal and it packs down pretty small so you can keep it in a door panel. Right here, center console, door panel, whatever, under your seat. Three good items that pack down pretty small.